Uh, I'll work on that. Anyway, good morning. Uh, today we begin uh, our uh, time into Lent. Uh, this is the first Sunday of Lent, and there are a couple of things uh, about this morning's worship service uh, as we change seasons. One, you'll notice a new liturgy today. Uh, we'll be doing setting five, uh, which is different. It's unusual. It is beautiful, though, for this season, and I think you'll pick up on the tunes uh, as we go forward through the weeks to come. Uh, the other thing you may have uh, figured out, if you uh, noticed in the e-blast this week, um, I believe that offering is a part of Lent. I think we have a ten or a part of worship. Excuse me. I, I think we have a tendency to think of our offerings more in terms of. Um, uh, our financial support of the church, uh, and, and we miss out on, on how important it is to our discipleship. So um, we are going to go back to collecting the offering, passing the plates during the worship service. Uh, uh, we've kind of got that set up. If uh, uh, You'll see kind of how that will uh, fall into the service too, so as well. Uh, but if you have questions about that or thoughts, I would sure invite you to come and talk to me and uh, Again, see what I wrote in the e-blast, and that will help you understand that as well. We begin our worship service with our prayers for reconciliation. Let me invite you, please, to stay. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Let us pray. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, and for sins that only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrong, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first hymn, O Lord, throughout these 40 days is number 319 in the Red Hymnal. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And 
In, in peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood, you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation, you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Genesis the ninth chapter, beginning at the first verse, or eighth verse. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Psalm 25, beginning at the first verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all day long. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions, 
Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another children's message. So today's children's message is about a story that I think probably almost all of you have heard. And if not, and if this is the first time, then that's fantastic. So I'm gonna read the story today from a special book that I have. It's called the Rhyme Bible Storybook. And it just has Bible stories in it that are written in rhyme. And they have some really cool pictures. And so we're gonna read about Noah today. I'm going to do my best to read it and show you the pictures. And it's called Safe in the Boat from Genesis chapters 6 through 9. God was very, very sad, for all the people were so bad. They would cheat and they would lie. They would make their sisters cry. They would kick and steal and fight, though they knew it wasn't right. Noah was the only one who was pleasing in God's sight. There's a picture. Those two up there are fighting and not doing it right. God told Noah, build a boat, make it strong so it will float, make it tall and make it wide and put a lot of rooms inside. So there they are, they're working on it. So Noah's family built the boat. They made it strong so it would float. But all the people laughed and said, they are loony in the head. Where's the water? Where's the sea? They're as crazy as can be. There's the people laughing at Noah, making fun of his family. God brought animals two by two. They skipped and crawled and hopped and flew, and squeaked and barked, and chirped and mooed. The boat would be a floating zoo. Now look at all those animals. And we know that that's not even close to all of them, right? They're headed into the big boat. God commanded, let it rain. And so it rained on hill and plain. Lightning flashed and thunder roared. It sprinkled, showered, rained, and poured. The water got deep. It covered the ground, but those in the boat were safe and sound. There they are inside that boat, and there's the thunderstorm. Days and weeks and months went by before the ground was finally dry. But then God said, it's time to come out. So out they came with a roar and a shout. And what did they see when they looked up high? A shining rainbow in the sky. There's a picture of the rainbow. So that is a very popular Bible story, right? About Noah and his ark. And it ends with that beautiful rainbow. And I'm sure that you have probably seen a rainbow up in the sky. And we are reminded of God's love and God's promise to take care of us every single time we see a rainbow. Because God sent the rainbow to Noah and his family to let them know that he loved them and he cared for them and it was all going to be okay. So when you see those beautiful rainbows, you remember that you are loved by God, no matter what. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for rainbows, for the ones in the sky, 
for the stickers that we have, for the rainbows that we have on our clothes, for all those beautiful colors. Thank you for sending us a reminder that you love us and that you care for us and that you love every single one of your children. Please take care of us throughout this week and bless all those who are sick or lonely or hurt and be with them. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, it is February in the winter, so I don't know if you'll see a rainbow anytime this week, but you might wanna look up the word sundog. It kind of looks like a rainbow and I just saw one the other day. So check that out and see what you think. I hope I see you soon. Take care. Holy Gospel for the first Sunday in Lent from the Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days Jesus from, came up, in those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let's pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, as you saved your beloved, as you rescued Noah and his family, remind us, O Lord, of your steadfast love and grace keep us always. In the safety and in the wonder of your promise, in Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, no, I didn't bring toys to play with uh, this morning, but uh, if you've never seen one of these before, this is the Little Tykes Noah's Ark uh, toy. Um, this one is almost 30 years old now. And uh, um, this one belonged to our eldest child. It's pretty amazing to me. I was noticing all of the animals are still here, plus Noah and his wife. That's probably more a, a tribute to their mom than it is to the children, all right? Um, but we had um, decorated our eldest's um, nursery in Noah's Ark themes, which was not uncommon, and I think probably still is pretty normal uh, for Noah's Ark-themed nurseries, right? Uh, and, and of course, you know, for a pastor's kid, right, our choices were a little bit more limited, we felt, and, uh, uh, which was wonderful. It was, by the way, really a beautiful nursery. It was really nice. And, um, and of course, the, the thing about it is, while that's a really wonderful thing, and Noah's Ark is really one of those great children's stories in the Bible, right? You got the animals, you got all of that kind of lovely stuff. It is so not a children's story, I mean, it really, when we think too much about it, I mean, it, it's really an awful story. I mean, it, a, a God who has such an anger management issue that he destroys the entirety of the creation and all of the people except eight of them. It, it, I, it, as I was preparing this week, I, I was reminded of something that I often tell people when, when we're doing Bible study. I say, you know, one of the questions that you really have to ask yourself is, why am I reading this, right? Why is this here? And I know you're going to say, well, Pastor Glenn, it's in the Bible because it happened. Well, lots of stuff happened that isn't in the Bible, right? Why did people think that this story was so important that they preserved it and not only kept it, but passed it along? Because, of course, this story is older than written language, 
So not only did they keep this story, but they passed it from parent to child and to grandchild and to generation and to generation for who knows how long. And then somebody thought the story was important enough to be written down and included in this thing that we call the Holy Scriptures. Right? And, 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 and what a story that it is, what this story says about God, that, that we should somehow live in fear of this God who will, who has the capacity in his wrath and anger to just destroy everything. Obviously, that's not why they kept the story. Obviously, that's not why they told the story. Obviously, that's not why they included the story in the Bible. Obviously, that's not why we read the story. Because the story really is not about the anger, the wrath, the judgment, the punishment of God. The story is about the rainbow. Right? I mean, that, that's got to be the only reason. That's got to be its true purpose. Oh, well, yeah, I know there are a lot of, of churches and pastors that like the angry God part. I get that. But what kind of God is that to worship? And what good does that part of the story do for anyone? The good of the story is its ending, is this promise, is this rainbow, this sign to remind us of a God who is always about steadfast love, a God who delivers his own, a God who loves more than anything. It, it's, it's lovely how the, the lectionary people tied this, teamed this uh, story up with the story of Jesus' baptism because there is an interesting twist in the way that Mark tells the story of Jesus' baptism as well. So you get, you get the baptism, right, and you get... Um, you know, this lovely moment when Jesus comes to uh, John there in the River Jordan and he's baptized and the heavens open and the voice of God speaks and the dove, the Holy Spirit comes down upon Jesus and there's all this lovely light and, and glory. And then Mark says the spirit, the, the, the devil, excuse me, the devil immediately drove him out into the wilderness Congratulations, Jesus, on your baptism. Now go spend 40 days without food or water and, and deal with wild beasts and all of that good stuff. Right? I mean, it, there's this, this oddness about the way those two really opposite things are kind of put up against each other. And what is Jesus' reaction to being literally thrown out into the wilderness? He comes back preaching good news. Now, for me, if I was tossed out into a wilderness place and not fed for 40 days, I don't necessarily think I'd have a lot of good things to say. But Jesus comes out of that moment with this promise of God's kingdom, God's kingdom right here, right now, here in our midst. This is the day of salvation now. Come and believe, trust, hope, in the good news of God. What a, what a word for us who get a little bit more fixated on the bad stuff, on the awful stuff, on the hard stuff, to be reminded that in those moments it is most important to see the rainbow, to believe the good news. I, I've been thinking a lot about this idea of, of wilderness, this particular image and that's kind of common in, in scriptures that's a, such an important part of, uh, of the gospel. And I think that for us it's really not that hard a, a, of a metaphor to, to get a hold of, right? Because we all have a bit of a, a, a wilderness image, a wilderness mindset, sometimes a wilderness that just kind of even lives in us. I was thinking about the flood story, and I was remembering back 2011, and I'm guessing that most of you remember that better than I did, because it wasn't quite that much in Omaha. But, but in the floods of, of uh, in, in 2011, in the summer, we took a little field trip with the boys, and we drove up to Yankton, uh, because I had lived in Sioux City for a long time, and, and uh, 
uh, we often at the summers spent them uh, up there at the dam at, at Yankton, and I wanted to see what it looked like when the dam was actually open. It was remarkable. I mean, I don't think I'd ever seen that much water, and 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 the power of the waters that came rushing out of the dam. It was just, it was just unbelievable. So, but when we came driving back home. We weren't able to take the interstate all the way back to Omaha, right? If you remember from Milkmo Valley down to Council Bluffs, it was washed out. It was gone. And so we actually had it, Missouri Valley had to turn and come in here to Blair. And I remember driving, you know, Highway 30 between Missouri Valley and Blair, and, and they had put, I can't remember now what kind of barriers on the sides of the road, sandbags, right? And, and there was just nothing but water. There was this little lane of blacktop and then just water. And, and I wish that I had come back later after the waters receded because I, I cannot even imagine, and I know that you can because you saw it, what those fields looked like when the waters receded. I mean, what it was like after the flood, the, the, the devastation, everything washed away, just, just mud and silt, right? Just this barrenness. I mean, that's... That's what wilderness is. It's this barren place. It's this, this place that we get spiritually where, where we're just, there's nothing for us. And just this empty despair, just this blight, this stain on our hearts. I mean, the words, you know, from the psalm this morning, right? I put my trust in you, God. Now, not, don't let me be put to shame. Don't leave me out here with nothing. Don't force me to bear the burden and the weight, the ugliness of, of this world without you. Fulfill, God, this promise and take away from me this sorrow, this anguish. And I think God says to that, well, let me wash that away from you. Let me wipe that problem away from you. Like when mom licked her finger and wiped the smudge off your face, right? Let me clean all of this up for you. Let me get rid of all of that grief that you bear, that ugliness in your soul. I got to thinking this week that that, that maybe the point of the flood story is not so much that we should try to avoid floods as perhaps we should be praying for one, for this flood of grace to wash over our hearts and our lives and make us clean and brand new and ready for what God has in store. I do think, by the way, and apologies, and please don't tell the bishop I said this, but we do get one thing wrong about baptism in Lutheran churches, and that's that we just only give you a couple of drops of water. Right? I do think that the dunkers have it correct, that it ought to just be a complete washing. That's the point of the thing. To make us complete and brand new by the grace of God, to wash away our despair and our hopelessness, to bring us to a new day, to show us this light, this lovely rainbow, this promise of God's steadfast and never-ending love. There is, uh, in this baptism story of Mark, by the way, a real significant key to unlocking Mark's gospel. He uses a word here uh, that he only uses twice in the gospel, here at the beginning in Jesus' baptism, and then again at the very moment of Jesus' death. A at the moment when Jesus dies on the cross, Mark tells us that the curtain of the temple, this thing that separates the, the holy of holies, the most inmost part of the temple, the place where only the chief priests could go in only one time of year, where the very presence of God was to be. That at the moment of Jesus' death, that, that barrier is ripped open so that the presence and grace of God can come out into the world. And here again, at Jesus' baptism, the heavens are ripped open. And the presence of God in the form of the Holy Spirit comes down 
comes free, pours out upon Jesus just as it was poured upon each of us in our baptism. It is kind of, uh, of lovely if you think about um, in Genesis, in the creation story, the second day of creation, God makes a dome, right, that separates the heavens and the earth because in ancient cosmology it was understood that the waters were up there and the dome is what protected the, the earth, what protected us from this outpouring, this dangerous outpouring uh, of waters, right? And, and, and this, is, this is how God's grace works, that he breaks down all the things that separate us from his love so that we might be open to know his promise and to live in it forever. And so God says, I have set my bow in the clouds. It will be a sign of this covenant between us and for all generations. Covenants are interesting things. We're going to talk about covenants now in these next couple of weeks through this season of Lent. These first readings are going to talk to us about the covenant that God has with us. And covenant is such a neat word because a covenant is an arrangement, a relationship between two people. And usually when we think about relationships, we think about contracts. Right? Because a contract is a relationship between two equal parties where everybody puts something in for the other. And because those things are thought to be equivalent, then you have a relationship. I go to the store, I give them some of my money, they give me groceries. We have an equal relationship. We have each gotten something out of that exchange. That is not what a covenant is. A covenant is a relationship imposed by one party on another. When we say the words, I love you, to someone, we impose a relationship on them. Whether they wanted to hear those words or not, whether they want to be in that relationship or not, we have created something that now cannot be taken away. And so when God says, you are mine, you are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit forever, those are not words we can escape. That is not a relationship we can just simply erase. We can run from it and we can try to hide, but it is a truth that is greater for us. And in that moment, God calls us to look and see not clouds, but rainbows to have a vision of ourselves and our world and our place and our purpose, to be a vision of life and light and hope. And so now we come into this season of focus, this season of renewal, this season of spring, to be reminded again that we are people of the rainbow, that we are people of the promise and people of hope. In Jesus' name, amen. The hymn, Seed That on Earth is Dying, is number 330 in the Red Hymnal, and I will invite you to stand as we sing. <laughs>
living together in trust and hope now, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Heavenly Father, now open the heavens to us and show us this sign of your steadfast love. To we who are lost in despair and hopelessness, now let the light of your grace shine upon us. Let it fill our hearts. Let it bring life to our wilderness places, O Lord, and wash away all that keeps us from knowing and living in your love and in your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, grant that we might be light and life for the world around us. Speak through us, O Lord, words of hope. Use us, O Lord, to be your kingdom in, in this time and place, to share your love with all around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we bring to you this lost world, this wilderness place, and we pray for your healing grace for all who are troubled this day. We pray for those who live in the midst of war and violence. We pray for those who have no food, who have no place, no shelter. We ask for help, O oh Lord, that we might serve one another, that we might create here in this world an image of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We remember today, O oh Lord, those near to us in need of prayer. We pray for the sick and the hospitalized. We pray for those recovering from surgery and those fighting disease. We pray for those who grieve this day, O oh Lord, that they might find in your grace the promise of life that never ends. We ask, Lord, that you would look upon all who we name before you here aloud and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All of these prayers, O oh Lord, we bring to you because of the grace and the, the mercy, the promise you make for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's take a moment and share God's peace with one another. we gather this morning's offering.
Let's pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, Oh, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, he said, and remember me. And again after supper he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, he said, and remember me. And so we pray together in the way he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. If you are communing in your pew this morning, or joining us now on the live stream here receive this gift of the grace of God. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let's pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Announcements wise, a couple of things. Next Saturday is uh, our church's day at the Recycling Center, at the Washington County Recycling Center. Uh, we do still need a couple of more folks. There is a sign up sheet at the Welcome Center. Please don't make us call you. Uh, sign up uh, and help us out if you would please as well. Next Sunday afternoon, uh, a very special event, the first of these courageous conversations. Uh, will be taking place at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there will be pizza, if that helps get you here as well, uh, and uh, just a chance to talk. Our topic for this first one will be gambling, uh, and it, you'll find it to be, uh, I think, informative uh, and um, uh, inspiring, I think, a chance to think about uh, what is our role in the world and how uh, we live as disciples as well. With some special speakers coming, and I think you'll you'll really enjoy it very much. Also, there is a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Center. If you're coming, let us know so we can make sure we have enough food as well. Uh, and again, we are now in the season of Lent, and so midweek Lenten services will continue Wednesday nights here in the sanctuary at 6.15, and hope that you'll make that a part of your discipline uh, as uh, we use this time again to uh, really renew ourselves spiritually as we can. Let us bow our hearts to God then and receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with mercy and grace. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, How, O Love How Deep, is number 322 in the red hymnal. Let's stand, shall we, as we sing.
in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.